Robin Hood Radio presents Flavor Matters with Serge Madikians. He's the owner of Saravan Restaurant in Amenia. If you can't find him in the kitchen or gardens, then follow him either on Facebook or Twitter at Saravan NY. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This is Serge from Saravan Restaurant and Flavor Matters, continuing my conversation with Liana Agajanyan, an Armenian-American journalist writer who, like me, was born in Tehran, Iran, and is now currently living and conducting her research and reporting from Arme- uh, from Los Angeles. And um, her pieces have appeared in the New York Times, in Foreign Affairs, in Food and Wine, in The Guardian. Um, but what I w- want to bring forward today, and thank you for staying, Liana, for this conversation, is your last article in Food and Wine um, that um, showcased... Uh, your experience in Detroit and uh, exemplifies your effort uh, on your blog, which uh, you hope to turn into a book called Dining uh, Dining in Diaspora. So please tell us a little bit about that article and tell us a little bit about what you found out and introduce our listeners to the article. Sure. So in my time in Detroit, I spent a lot of time interacting with and cooking with the Ladies Guild of St. John Armenian Church in Southfield, Michigan. And that was one of the highlights of my experience living in the city to be able to interact with these women who had, uh, you know, historical knowledge of a cuisine that you could categorize as perhaps unknown and dying in a lot of ways because they're uh, kind of the last of a a breed of of, of, uh, a part of our Armenian community who continually cook that way. Um, And so from that experience, uh, I had um, an opportunity to interview more in-depthly one of the women that... I cooked with and that I became close with for a series in food and wine about aunties. And that is defined as, you know, a woman in your life who is not necessarily your mother and not even necessarily your biological aunt, but someone who has become a role model or figure for you during any, at any point in your life. And Roberta, who I highlighted in the piece was, was someone like that for me in Detroit She taught me a lot about Armenian cooking and um, uh, uh, was like a portal into a history that we have that I did not know about before. And so it was a pleasure to be able to bring her story to the surface and have it be in a publication like that. uh, I was uh, very excited to see that um, article uh, in the Food and Wine and very proud and excited about it. Um, one of the things that I was curious about is that uh, Roberta uh, is from Western Armenia, or her traditions were um, more, you know, from the, the, the Anatolia area of Armenia. And you being an Armenian Iranian, what did you, what stood out for you? Not only, I don't know if you spoke in English or Armenian, but uh, just just the difference, because there is a difference in cooking and how we have survived our environments, because we were in Iran. Not only we survived, we thrived, and we gained uh, characteristics from Iranians, and we shared characteristics with the Armenians. And uh, so you as an Armenian, Iranian, American living in Los Angeles and now in Detroit, spending time with Roberta, share any insights that you think you might have? Yeah, it's just, it's a window into this idea that I'm always trying to remember that our Armenian experiences are so different. We're such a complex group of people and my answers as to what I eat in my house and I consider 
Iranian Armenian or Armenian food or my lived experience as an Armenian differs widely from many, many people. And that includes someone like Roberta, who has a different background. She's, I think, a third generation ancestor of Armenian genocide survivors who, again, directly left that part of the world as refugees, landed in Detroit as the first place that gave them refuge and lived there for three or four generations. And so uh, the the food that they cook, that she cooks, are are named a certain way and made a certain way from the literally the villages that they came from from that time. And so the cooking is very different um, from my household. You know, in my household, as I'm sure in yours, we eat a lot of rice and elements that are very I- Iranian or Middle Eastern, but the cooking that they do in that um, guild and the cooking that Roberta does with them differs a lot from that and I I think she said to me I think I might have kept it in the piece but she said I feel like some of the time that these are like museum pieces in that she's making something that has been made for hundreds of years and in that scenario where they're cooking for other people it's not necessarily changing it's this just ancient piece of like an artifact from that part of the world being manifested in their hands in the kitchens of the church there um i um i could not agree with that more i just want to interject to reintroduce you to our listeners this is serge from Serevan restaurant and flavor matters and i'm speaking with the armenian writer journalist liana agajanyan liana it's you you raised a very interesting point first of all you and i are from tehran just so our listeners get an idea of the diversity you and i are from tehran and you said that our household eats a lot of rice because mm-hmm. we're from northern part of Te- Iran. In southern part of Iran, they don't eat as much rice. And now we're talking about Armenians that uh, you were um, living with in uh, Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, uh, that are from Anatolia. Uh, the uh, What is today Turkey at the time was the Ottoman Empire. And you mentioned about how Roberta uh, said that what she was making, uh, which was this sweet phyllo rolled dough um, with cinnamon and walnuts, uh, it's sort of a, 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 a museum piece because it has so much history. And I just want to in, the, the, include in this how I feel when you say that, because as you know, I bake nazuk. I'm not a baker but I bake nazuk. Mm -hmm. And every time I roll nazuk, there is a sensibility, there is a feeling that overtakes me that is very difficult to explain. But I can tell you that my grandfather, my grandmother, my mother, my ancestors, (laughs) they're all hovering around me. And yes, I'm an Armenian from Iran, so my nazuk is made... (sighs) Unlike regular nazuk, which is with walnut and cinnamon, mine is made with cardamom, pistachios, and rose petals. So I think the diversity that we gain by living in different places uh, brings a very interesting mosaic to the Armenian identity. You have done more research and you have traveled more extensively and you look at the world as a writer, which offers a different analytic perspective. You know, I I cook for a living. I want to ask you in your research, in your writing, in your own thinking, in this mosaic of Armenians, which... I like to call the worlds of the Armenians. What is, what is the common denominator? What is it that you have extracted that says, ah, that's the Armenian? Mm-hmm. That's, that's the a Armenian. Great question. <laughs> Big question. I think, 
I think that the truthful answer to that for personally for me is that I'm still discovering that it changes all the time because we're changing all the time and we're, we're from different places. And so the, the more interactions we have with each other, those definitions change. But in terms of the food, um, you know, we, we can talk about ingredients, I'm sure. And I'm sure your, your answers would be better than mine. But as, as a journalist who has observed a lot of these Armenian communities, I think my takeaway from the cuisine aspect is that there is a lot of labor involved in the food we make, no matter who's making it and where, and where they're from. That, that food is very much tied to ritual and so we live and die by that, that cuisine and that all of us are manifesting things in our plates that we cannot access elsewhere. And so the, the food, no matter what it is, takes on a, a more spiritual meaning, a more um, meaningful meaning. It's not just what you're eating. It's what, what you're trying to access by eating that food. And I, I think, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I, I, I suspect that when you say spiritual element, you don't mean like a godly element, no. or that we, but a spiritual a connection. Yes, yes, and, absolutely. And, and for you, where the, where do, do you feel that connection to the family, to the history, to the culture, to the art? Mm-hmm. How does that... Um, manifest in you? I think in everything that you said, I mean, for sure, obviously, you know, my first experiences with cooking, just like anyone else, were contained in the kitchens of my grandparents and my parents. And so the food that is cooked there, made there, eaten there, has a very spiritual connection for me. And But also at the same time, I find that connection with every Armenian community that I visit, with every chance I get to experience their specific cooking and their specific food, all of it is important to me, whether it's my family or someone else's, because when they, when those lines become connected, we become stronger and we understand each other more and we are richer for that diversity of experience. And so being able to cover all of that, although it's a big task, um, is, is very important for me. Because I think they're they're all worthy, and when they when they're stacked against each other, that shows us having such a rich history, and not many people can say that. So, for me, the 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 difference is the complexity is not a hindrance; it's a privilege to be able to have have that much diversity in, in your background. You know, it's it's interesting. I I uh, listening to you and um, paying attention. And uh, identifying quite a bit with what you're saying, I, uh, <clears throat> which I hope that you you can stick around because I think uh, we're running out of time on this segment. But I want to sort of summarize it and see if you agree with this, and that we can discuss a little bit more. Is that, you know, we we've lived uh, ancestrally. Uh, as minorities in in most places, even though we've contributed immensely and we've prospered wherever we've lived, uh, whether it be the Ottoman Empire, whether it be in Lebanon, in Iran, in um, in, in in the U.S., um, what I find a common thread among Armenians and Armenian identity and Armenian uh, food is not only the ingenuity, and I will give you an example, and hopefully we can talk about that, about your writing about Imrik uh, Halva, you know, ingenuity, that's ingenuity. And then also our our, our, um, sort of instinctual ability uh, to adaptability and survival, you know, wherever we go. But all of them, all of them, they do not inhibit us from seeing joy or celebrating joy when joy comes. And I think 
um, what you were describing to me with the Women's Guild or when you were making the baklava and all your hands are in butter and somebody's rolling the dough, the other one's flowering. That is the joy of becoming together and recognizing the various worlds of the Armenians mm-hmm. and all the common threads that are there. Yeah, absolutely. You hit the nail on the head. I think that we have experienced immense loss, but at the same time, we have managed to make that loss, take that loss and make amazing things with it. And so there's so many stories and they're very unknown because we have, as you mentioned, such an amazing ability to adapt and seamlessly blend wherever we go. And so um, a lot of the times our presence isn't known, but we have pioneered so much in the communities that we have ended up in, in Iran, in Syria, in the U.S. Um, Yeah, we have immensely contributed and that uh, also applies to the, the f- footprint we have in terms of food, too, especially in the U.S., um, which I find out more and more with every story I do. But, yeah, v- very, very true. Um, yeah, no, I hope you will stick around for one more segment. Yeah, I've of course. Not to dig deeper. <laughs> I, I, I'm so looking forward. This is Serge from Serevan Restaurant and Flavor Matters, and I've had the absolute pleasure of speaking with the Armenian journalist Yana, who has joined us from California. Thank you very much for tuning in. Flavor Matters is a joint production of the Saravan Restaurant and Robin Hood Radio. For more information on the Saravan Restaurant in Amelia, New York, saravan.com on the web.